Okay, it's been a long time coming, but now we're going to make a connection to the camera itself. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials, my name's Nigel. Okay, we've done a lot of preparation work and a lot of settings to get to the stage, so now we're going to make a connection to the camera itself, which is going to return us back a camera device object. And with that device object, we can start making requests and sessions in earnest. Okay, let's make a start. Okay, what I need to do is now I'm going to be communicating with the actual camera device itself, I need camera permission, so good thing to set that up first. And we're going to set that up in our Android manifest file. Let's find that. There it is there. Android manifest. Select that. And so down here, we basically select user's permission. So we want to use permission of functionality built into the Android or the device. And, and I'm going to select the top one there, which is going to be the camera permission. Close that. So that's done. So we can switch back to our source code. Okay, we've got that. Now I'm going to create a method called connect camera. Pretty self explanatory. I want to make a connection to the camera. Okay, I think I'll pull that below the setup. Let's see if we can find the setup method. So I'll stick this just directly below. And what are we going to do? Let's of course call it connect camera. First thing we need for to connect to the camera is we need a cam instance of the camera manager object. So let's create that now. We will need to cast that into a camera manager object. And to get that, we can actually get that from Android OS. So if we do a call get system service, and inside the context, we have the camera service. So we're, now we've got a camera manager object. From the camera manager object, we can make a connection to the camera. So let's call that. So call open camera is what we want to do. And in our previous tutorials, we have created a camera ID, a state callback, and also a background thread handler so we can enter all of those now so the first one will be m camera id next one is the device state callback and then it's the background handler as such okay we've got a big red line underneath let's see what's going on there okay there's two issues there <laughs> um unhandled exception so we actually, we've got to put a, a try-catch harness around that just to handle in case anything goes wrong. So let's do that now. That's done. Oh, we've still got a red line underneath. Let's see what that's about. Okay, so this is saying that it requires permission, or to call, call check permission. So this is a new feature to Android um, Marshmallow, the Marshmallow series, and later. I do have a tutorial series, I thought we would put a link just above that, to how to uh, port applications across to Android Marshmallow in regard to permissions such as this, but I do need to add permissions to this one. Okay, so first thing I want to do is just to do a check of the OS. In other words, if it's Marshmallow or later, we need to add this permission. If not, we can just leave it alone as we did previously. And to do that, I can call the build version SDK version and we want to check if it's bigger or equal to Marshmallow basically and to get Marshmallow version codes and Marshmallow has got a big M there okay so we want to check to see if that's bigger than that just let me just complete this if it's not Marshmallow or later, we can just keep things as normal. So I'll just complete the brackets underneath here as such. 
and let's put the open camera call in there. Just like that. Okay, now if we are using Marshmallow or later, we're going to need to set up permissions check. So let's set up a permission check now. So I need to call, we need to call the context compact and inside here it gives us check self permission and the context is this and the actual permission we can get from the manifest permission and in this regards it's going to be data uh, camera so what we need to do is to check to see if permission has been granted or not and we can package manager gives us a permissions granted variable for us to check against Okay, so if permission's already been granted, so if you're installing this application for the very first time on Marshmallow or later versions of Android, you would do this check and you get a pop-up box saying, we need to access your camera hardware to run your camera application, allow or deny. And so this is where this check's gonna go in. So if it's okay, and then once you get granted permission, every time you keep using the application or starting the application after that, you don't need to check it. it, it remembers that. So what we want to do is copy this line here and paste it into here. Okay, so that's fine. We've granted it, it's been granted permissions, it runs okay. But what happens if it hasn't been granted permission? Now there's a couple things we want to do here. First thing we want to check to see if previously the users denied permission to the application and they want to start up and use the application again, we'll send them a little message saying, okay, you denied permissions, but you want to use it again, so we need permissions to use, we need camera permissions to use this application. So let's set up that check now. And the method for that is called shod show permission request rationale. And again, we'll pass it in the camera permission as such. And we're just going to, you can set up whatever dialogues or messages. I'm just going to call simple toast and display a message. And I'll keep this message pretty basic. Um, video at requires access to camera. And set the toast length. as short and show that toast. Okay, so that particular condition is if you've denied access to the camera or any other resource previously but you're starting up the application and you might want to use um, grant access this time. So put that check in there. And the other, now we put request permissions. This will happen especially if you're starting up the application or installing the application for the first time. Request permissions, it takes a string array and inside that we initialize that with the manifest permission detail as such and now next we need to put in a request code so in other words we're going to send the request code up to the permissions server you can think of it and we'll get a code request coming back to us saying this specific re permission request has, has a response to it. So we need to create a variable for that. So let me see where to add that. I'll probably add that at the top here. And it's just a simple int. And I'll call it, um, let me just type it out, what's in my mind, which is nothing at the moment. Request camera, something that means saying permission result. And let's give it a value as well at the end there. Okay, so when I make when I make a request for permission, there's going to be a callback method called back to me, and 
I'll need to check this to make sure it's this particular specific request. Okay, let's go back to connect camera. Okay, I need to add that in here. Request camera result. Okay, that's it for our request, but as I just mentioned previously, we need to implement a callback to see if our permission request was successful or not. And um, it's an overridden method, so if I go back into the activity again here, because I think I've forgotten the name of it, I can probably find it in here. So on, re here we got here, on request permission result is what I want. Let's just select OK for that. Here it is here. Okay, so first thing I want to do is to do the check for the request code. So I've got the request code here. And check that that's equal to the int that we just created before. Request camera result. Okay, that's okay. Now we want to see if our request was granted or not. Let's put another if in there. Um, grant results from here already holds information whether or not our request was granted or not. It's an array. We just go through to the first item of that array and we check it with the package manager will give us a variable for us to compare it against. So we just check to see that and I made a mistake here. I don't want to, I want to see if that's not equal to as such. So if something's gone wrong, well, we've been rejected the request. And if we've had the reje request rejected, we can display that in a toast. As we've done before. Actually, I think I might need to call the application context in this one. Okay. So in here we'll set up a message. So we're saying application won't run without camera uh, with application will not run without camera services something to this effect and set the time for our toast and show the toast okay so that part of the Marshmallow permissions, runtime permissions is now set up. Now we've created a connect camera method. Now let's call that method in two places. So first place would be on resume when we start up the application. Here we have on resume here, set up camera. A good place to connect the camera is after all the setup configuration is done here. So we can just call connect camera. And also in the surface listener, so if our surface of our texture view hasn't already been fully created and inflated, we've got a listener to uh, notify us when that happens. So let's go into there and we've got set up camera just as in the on resume. So we can call connect camera there as well. Okay. And once the camera is, let's go back into this connect camera method and let's look at the open camera open camera call from the camera manager now we've got the device state callback so what I want to do is I want to put some indication that we've actually fully connected our device without any errors so if I go into there you see we've got these three overridden methods on open means it's entirely successful and as you can see we assign the camera device to our camera device member here and then we can move forward with creating our requests and sessions. So I'm just going to put a toast underneath here just to indicate that, yes, we have now got connection to the camera. Okay. So get application context. Put a message down here saying, camera. Connection made something like that. I'm sure, I had a better method during testing. And set the link for our toast and show the toast. It is 
a bit of a highlight to actually make connection to the camera. There's a lot of stuff you can do after that. Okay, so let's try running this application and see if we can get our connected toast display. Okay, let me record that so you can see what's happening. Okay, so we've got permissions. Um, allow camera to video image to take pictures and record video. This is a camera application, so that's a good idea to allow that. And you can now see camera connection made. In other words, yes, we've got a workable configured camera device. Quite an important step. Okay, that concludes this episode. So we actually learnt a couple of important things. When we went to um, open up a connection to the camera device, we had an issue where we had to we didn't have permissions with Marshmallow, our current version of OS. So we had to add the runtime permission support to our application. Then we could make the call of opening the camera and getting the state callback with the camera device set up for ourselves. So we concluded this tutorial with a working camera device so we can now start steaming forward with creating our requests and setting up our sessions for what's going to be our video application. This concludes this particular tutorial. If you want to get notification of the next following episodes or any other tutorials that I'm currently working on, click on that subscribe button. And surrounding me, if you want to keep updated with all the workings and news and updates of tutorials, I've got all my social media accounts that I update every time I do something related to mobile application tutorials. So if you're on a PC, you can connect to any of those accounts right now. And importantly, directly above me is a link to my website. So as well as watching the video there, you can also get the details of the code in GitHub and there's also brief explanations of all the code changes I make there as well. So it's a really good support reference to these videos. Anyway, that's all for this one. Bye for now.